All right, today I'm going to talk a little bit about blade geometry because uh, I, I, I do believe that, that a lot of the importance of it goes grossly overlooked. A lot of people talking about this steel and that steel, this heat treatment and that heat treatment. And I wanted to drive home the fact that geometry determines the functionality of the heat treatment of the steel. And the order of importance is just that. Geometry, heat treatment, steel. So we can have the best steel in the world, okay? But if it's shaped like a ball, it will not cut you, okay? The geometry is not there to cut. Whereas a piece of paper, we know how weak paper is, but it'll cut you, and it's because of the geometry. <clears throat> Next, we have the heat treatment, okay? So, once again, we can have this excellent steel, okay? But without good heat treatment, what does it matter, okay? And this is where you get companies like, um, like Buck with their 420HC, and, and, and their, their heat treatment is quite good for a medium to lower grade steel, all right? Now you combine that with a good edge geometry, like on a buck 119, things like that. They've got pretty good edge geometry, all right? <clears throat> Blade geometry as a whole. It's got a, a high um, uh, hollow grind, and then that, that, that secondary bevel is actually quite high as well. There's not these um, very noticeable shoulders on, on that fine cutting edge. <clears throat> so you get a knife that slices really well combined with a great heat treatment on a medium grade steel and you've got something that's that's quite special and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you like this I have two knives that basically are the same application um, but they function completely different one will cut a carrot one will cut it but blow the carrot you know 10 feet away off the off the kitchen counter or whatever you're doing and <clears throat> this here is a it's, it's a wood lore clone made um, by Grey Wolf Knives. Uh, excellent quality. This is 01 steel, and this is a 5.30 seconds blade, um, pretty much modeled after Ray Mears without a distal taper or anything. But for all purposes, for what we're talking about today, it's going to work. So once again here, we have the geometry determining the functionality of the heat treatment of the steel. So we have good steel, and from what I can tell, we have good heat treatment. But there's one thing, and it's, it's, it's with all Scandi grinds, uh, especially when you get past 330 seconds, you're talking about a knife that doesn't really slice anymore. And it's because look at how low this grind is. Look at how low. You know, what are we, a quarter inch, uh, you know, third of an inch, I'll even give it. And then we reach full stock thickness of 530 seconds. Okay. Take, for instance, this here, Bark River. <clears throat> Aurora, all right, and you'll see the Bark River Aurora. Maybe you can't see, but it is is thicker. <coughs> all right, I believe uh, 0.170. All right, this is thicker, but look at the grind. The grind is 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 near the top of the. You know, it's 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 nearing the spine here. So from this point to down here, uh, you know, we've got. Uh, you know, a, a nice, nice, keen uh, cutting profile here. The difference is this will cut, this will slice very well. Once you get beyond this, okay, in, into whatever you're cutting, if you're doing shallow cuts all day, all right, all you're doing is feather sticking and batoning, all right? Feather sticking and batoning, these Scandi ground knives, they work great, <clears throat> all right? They baton very well because all of a sudden, within a quarter inch into the wood, you're reaching full stock thickness, it splits, you know, unless you're splitting ridiculously big stuff for the size knife that you've got. Okay, <clears throat> once again, geometry determines the functionality of the heat treatment of the steel. So we can have great, great geometry on a poor heat treatment, what's that going to do? It's probably going to create an, a very unstable edge. So does it matter if the steel is unobtainium? 
Does it matter if it's a VG10, uh, 3V? No, it doesn't. Because whatever it is, the, geom the, the, the heat treatment's off. Okay, so the last thing we should be thinking about is people who use knives, all right, is, is the type of steel to such a degree. But I see it backwards a lot. I see it, it's the steel first. Oh, it's 3V. Oh, it's S30V. Well, what's the geometry like? Because that's going to determine everything from there. All right? Which also leads to some weirdness of the maker, any maker, all right, will say offers this knife in 01. Okay? But then perhaps the maker will offer the very same knife in 3V. What's the purpose of using a different steel? if the geometry is the same, right? Why would we go to a steel that, that can have such a finer edge and is so much more durable, but we're still using the stock, the stock thickness of a lesser steel, okay? A lot of it's just marketing, and a lot of it just people, oh, I want a knife in 3V, and it's the same geometry as one in 01 or 1095, okay? But... <clears throat> These are things to think about, all right, when, when, you, when you're looking at a knife and when you're looking at these things, and you have to marry up, okay, you have to match, as an outdoors person, you have to match the geometry to your style, okay? Do you do a lot of feather sticking? Do you do a lot of um, batoning? If so, um, you may not be impeded by geometries that are a little more obtuse. Do you do more game? Do you want to do more cross grain batoning? Cross grain batoning with this thick scandy is is it's not very good. I mean, I've I've had it back me out of of cuts, you know, been batoning and and, and have it back back me right out because once I reach that full stock thickness, it's you're fighting you're fighting geometry, all right. <clears throat> once again things to think about. So match the style up to to what you do. And then from there, all the rest is, you know, I mean, you can get a nice uh, martini um, uh, fillet knife. Look at the geometry there, right? What's the, the uh, heat treatment? What's the steel? Well, you know what? The thing cuts like a laser. Same with the Green River, uh, the butcher knives. Look at, look at the geometry of that, <clears throat> all right? You could have the greatest steel in the world, like we're saying, but if the geometry is shaped like a butter knife, it's not going to work well for you. So keep that in mind, all right, when you're looking around and you're looking at this stuff, and keep the facts straight uh, when, you're, when you're amongst these forums of knife enthusiasts and stuff. When, when people stop toting the geometry of something and, and we have these ridiculously thick cutting edges, all right, and uh, I know some people are, are calling for these knife makers to please, please make us knives that are thinner again because the, the market has gone in the complete opposite direction now. It's, everything is so thick, and of course you can avoid warranty issues with some chimp you know, going through a log this thick uh, you know, with, with his four-inch belt knife. Um, you know, he needs it like a wedge. He needs it like a pry bar. Otherwise, he breaks the knife and goes, oh, jeez. Oh, man, if there's something wrong with this knife, this knife is garbage. And they send it back, and, the, oh, the manufacturer must go, oh, my. What do we got to, what, what are we going to do? And someone says, well, let's just make it thicker. <laughs> so so that's, that's what you have. But for people who use knives and who are, um, you know, students of this art, students of this craft, and aren't just uh, mindless chimps uh, snapping knives um, for no good reason, um, People want better geometries. So think about that, okay? Think about what, uh, what the shape of a bullet, the shape of a, uh, a rocket, uh, the shape of cars, all right? The geometry of things. Think about the geometry of your knife and realize that the geometry, okay, the geometry determines the functionality of the heat treatment of the steel. And keep your priorities in that order when you're doing your next purchase.